Alright, so my book was Empires of Light, Edison, Tesla, Westinghouse, and the Race to Electrify the World. And when I think of electricity, I think of hair metal, so if you stay awake long enough, you can uh, hear some hair metal that goes with this. Um, here's the book if you guys want to check it out. It's a really good book, so I want to pass it around in case anybody else wants to pick it up. Um, the author is Jill Jones. And this book is really, as the title implies, about these three people, um, Edison, Tesla, and Westinghouse. And they called Edison the Wizard of Menlo Park. And I think each of these three guys shows a different aspect of creative destruction. And what Edison was really about was, um, I think he was sort of thrilled by the idea of being an inventor. and. Um, Here's a picture of his invention hall where he had tons of employees just working on inventing things. He ended up with over 1,093 patents. And how he did this was he said he would make a minor invention every 10 days or so and a big thing every six months. So you talked about industrializing this inventive process. Um, I don't know if he industrialized the innovative process because he has over a thousand inventions and we only really know of him for the light bulb, so it's kind of like you sow a thousand ninety-three seeds and hopefully one of them grows somewhere. Um, but yeah, he worked on things like the phonograph, the motion picture camera, and then of course the light bulb that was very successful. Um, so that's the main thing that I think Edison um, was about, was just sort of having fun inventing things. And later in life, he sort of failed by trying to come up with a new way of mining that didn't work, and he spent millions and lost everything. So um, I don't know if he's the best example of an inventor. This is Nikola Tesla, and Tesla was kind of a crazy guy. Um, he was a Serbian, and when he was growing up, he really wanted to be an engineer, but in Serbia you could either be a priest or go into the army. So <laughs> he basically almost died over it. Like he was literally dying of some serious disease, and on his deathbed his father was like, okay, okay, I can send you to the best engineering school in the world. And he immediately brightened up. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's his most well-known invention, the AC polyphase uh, dynamo. And the interesting thing about that is that it came to him like in this flash, like a vision. He was walking with his friend in a park and um, all of a sudden it just like struck him and he fell on the ground and like wrote in the dirt this drawing. <laughs> this is the kind of guy he was. He would like, um, he had wireless light bulbs that were fluorescent. He would hold them in his hands and um, do things like... Um, you know, hold on to something that was generating electricity until flames started spouting off of him. And um, here's him as an old man, by the way. He got terribly lonely, and his only friends were pigeons. So uh, that's the sort of lunatic that he was. Here's him generating lightning um, up in some laboratory out in the mountains. But the main thing that I think was important about Tesla was that he was really driven by his interest. And so it wasn't that he was a practical man. He wasn't very good with money. Um, obviously, he wasn't very good with people either. Um, <laughs> pigeons, maybe. Uh, <laughs> but he was really good at thinking in completely new ways that people hadn't thought before. So he. Um, invented things like the radio, fluorescent light, he took the first x-ray photographs, wireless remotes, he created a wireless submarine, he tried to tell the army that they'd be able to build a big one and float this thing around. Um, and I'm going to continue moving on here. This is George Westinghouse. And you really just read about Westinghouse because this guy is really interesting. Um, he was sort of like this ferocious lion of a man. And it wasn't that he was cruel, but he was just like a very firm, uh, strong businessman and a very nice guy also. Um, and what he was really about was efficiency. He, it wasn't that he was interested in electricity or, you know, 
he was really into trains, but it wasn't that it was the trains that was important. He was a really efficient guy, and um, I just think he liked making things that worked, and he liked being in charge of the things he was doing. But the cool thing about him is he was an inventor and an entrepreneur, so he was really good at taking stuff that was new and seeing how to apply it somewhere and then actually applying it, whereas the other two weren't as good at that and sort of ended up with no money in the end and um, were sort of a burden on society. <laughs> um, one of the big parts about this book was the war of the currents, and that's how it ties all three of these guys together, because Edison really believed that DC power was the best, and Tesla and Westinghouse believed in AC, and it turned out that AC won, because the problem with DC was you'd need a cable as thick as your arm if you wanted this thing to go more than a mile. And so mm -hmm. I think this is really a good example of creative destruction at its best, because um, Edison, I don't think he was a bad guy. I think he really believed that DC power was the safest, best way to transmit power. But um, it turned out that it wasn't, and um, so creative destruction won. Edison got kicked out of his company. It became General Electric as we know it now, and not Edison's General Electric. Um, Edison even tried things like making AC the current that they used to electrocute people so that it would be, you know, sort of defamed and um, evil. Um, okay, I promised hair metal. Let's see if this works. So there's a band called Tesla, and it turns out they're actually really into him. <laughs> But I did put some of the lyrics on here because I thought this was hilarious that they were that into it. Um, Tesla was a great friend with Mark Twain and these other famous people. They'd come over to see him, like, electrocute himself and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's some stuff about, you know, they thought Tesla was a weirdo and they were into Edison stuff. Um, you know, Edison taking a shot at Tesla, trying to take him out. And then they even have this thing here, you might remember this, Marconi is a phony. <laughs> like an 80s hair metal band. But, and this title, Man Out of Time, is a biography about Tesla. So I thought this kind of like summarized some of the stuff about, about these guys in a hilarious way. Okay, so I think high school age readers could read this book. It was a really good book. Um, I'm going to kind of breeze through this stuff now. It covered everything from how electricity was very first started. Wish I had time for this quote. This guy, like, electrocutes himself really badly, and, you know, he just says, I wouldn't do it again for the kingdom of France. And um, that was the Leiden jar. And then they go all the way through, you know, pretty much current AC electricity is what we use now. Um, also got this book. This shows you not to loan me a book. Uh, what else does. But there were just a couple things I wanted to say about the writing. She had really good detail, so if you want a good idea of this time period, um, she would, you know, it would be like it was an August morning at 7 o'clock, so and so was just shot this morning, um, and that afternoon Tesla did this. You know, just, she just brought everything in that was going on at the time. Um, there were some really annoying parts where she would write her stuff kind of backwards. Um, there's this thing that Strunk and White say about inexperienced writers. Low of their attributives with explanatory verbs just means that instead of saying said, they come up with a fancy word that, uh, all the time. And not only would she do that, but she had all this stuff like all the time, instead of saying Morgan said this, she would say said, said Morgan right in the middle of the sentence. or wired Cleveland to the party instead of, you know, the other way around. And so, if it was once, it wouldn't have been as annoying, but it did get kind of irritating how much she did this. And my last slide, um, that's the author, Joe Jones. She's got some interesting books about, like, Americans' fascination with drugs. and um, Good author. <laughs>